Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today is part two of the series on getting stronger in Mabinogi. If you haven't seen part one yet on character growth, you can click the link on the screen now to see that first. In this video, we'll be covering stacking bonuses. These are passive or active ways to increase your character's strength using items or skills that can build up your character outside of stats and gear. In the character window, you'll find a box near the bottom detailing potential. When you click on details, you'll see a rewards given by the potential system, which receives increasing points as you level up. Starting at level 1000, you'll gain points until you reach 3000 potential. There are a lot of prizes given passively by the potential system, and if you've done Blinid's Brave Boost, then you probably have a lot of these already. Using potential points, you can increase stats of your choice, and you can reconfigure these at any time using AP to reset. As you get stronger, this is helpful for bolstering your weaker stats a bit to help pad up your damage in some areas. Totems are items that give a bonus to a particular stat and can be anything from magic defense to percent damage increases. We can only have one of each totem active at a time. You can get these pretty often through varying events and rarely by opening Royal Society Appreciation Boxes. You can buy those from Melwin. You can also obtain an Albin Knight's Emblem from Albin Knight's Training or a Command Emblem from the Awakened Abyssal Lord mission. These cannot be activated together, so you'll need to choose between the two. They both have a synthesis system, which lets you combine other emblems of the same type to make them stronger or gain additional effects at the risk of the emblem being destroyed. Homestead figures can boost stats similar to totems, but are a bit more difficult to obtain. They typically come from gacha or limited time events. You can only have one of each bonus from figures, and in addition to this, there are sequel figures that can stack. The most expensive of these is often the figures that give bonuses to percent damage or music buff effect. A third effect you can have in homesteads, in addition to figures and sequel figures, are pet houses. Just like figures and totems, you can only have one of each bonus active at a time. While a pet is resting in a house, it will give stat bonuses based on the level of the house. I usually leave my pets resting so the bonuses remain, but if you're limited on pets this may not be an option for you. You can only obtain manuals to build the houses and upgrade them via the Ducat shop. Echo Stones are another boost to stats. These go above and beyond every stat cat in the game, so they are very useful bonuses for players of all levels. You can obtain these from the mission Shifinaha, which sounds nothing like how it's spelled in English. Depending on the mission type, you'll get different stone as a reward, and you can upgrade these at the end of the mission. You get three attempts every mission, and there is a fail rate. The max rank of these is 30, and they can give a ton of stats, as well as other effects at higher levels. I have a video on this mission if you'd like to look into these in more detail. Many technique cards add passive or active bonuses to damage. Most of these are self-explanatory once you unlock them, but the ones I'll mention here are Fate Weaver and Phantasmal Sight. Obviously, you'll also want things like redouble defensive and exploit weakness in your lineup of buffs and effects. Uh, there's just not much more to talk about there. Phantasmal Sight is the easiest to go over. While active, it will increase damage dealt to enemies that are marked by its effect. The damage boost is up to 3%, which is quite a lot when you're dealing with thousands of damage. Killing enemies with this mark is also the primary means of collecting remnants, which are used to activate Fate Weaver. Fate Weaver is a bit more complex, as every time you use the skill you get to choose between using a buff or a debuff, and which effects it will have. It also matters in what order you combine the effects, as there are hidden bonuses that apply when you use a certain combination. The five aspects of Fate Weaver are Might, Fortification, Swiftness, Focus, and Reversal. Might as a buff increases damage in magic attack, and as a debuff it will decrease enemy attack in magic attack. Fortification as a buff will increase defense, and as a debuff will decrease defenses. Swiftness as a buff will increase movement speed, aim speed, attack delay, and skill loading speed, and as a debuff will decrease the same. Focus as a buff is an effect similar to Shadow Cloak, which will drop aggro temporarily, for 3 seconds. And as a debuff, it will make an enemy drop aggro for 3 seconds. Reversal as a buff will give an effect similar to Life Drain, where you gain HP as a percent of damage you do. As a debuff, it will increase the damage dealt to a target by that same percentage. Depending on the order you choose to use the effects, it can give a 2% increase or decrease to the effects you chose. Using the combination order of 351, 
five two three one or two four one five three will increase the buffs and debuffs the damage. The last of these increases the effects from all five aspects. A combination of 3152 will give a lesser increase to damage, but an increase to defensive capability and loading speed. Combo cards are an insane damage bonus for a good number of skills. Combo cards naturally drop from shadow missions and other places, but expire after a certain amount of time unless you have an item that extends the duration, revives the card, or makes the card permanent. These can be obtained from Uka Orb Gacha at low rates, and some of these can be purchased from other players on the auction house. While VIP is active, your combo cards don't expire, and will remain active. For top level players, this becomes increasingly important. You can customize combo cards for skills that you have Dan 3 using advancement badges that you get from successful Dan tests. You can also go a more pay to win route and customize premium combo cards with combo card reroll tickets, which are also available in the dungeon guide shop. If you're looking to work on combo cards, it's definitely in your interest to have VIP active. The other super pay to win bonus worth mentioning is the doll bag bonuses that you can get while having dolls summoned. Not only do they collect items, but they also give stats as well. Some dolls can be summoned alongside other dolls to further increase the bonus, but you have limited slots, so some of the bigger bags won't be able to be used simultaneously with each other. Despite being quite hidden in the menu, Renown are very large and extremely impactful character growth bonuses. Neil's Renown is perhaps the single greatest bonus in the game, and for alchemy, nothing beats Edern and Dillion and Elenid Renowns. These cap out at level 50, but can only gain a certain amount of experience per day. This requires a bit of long-term planning, but are definitely worth it. Another passive way to increase stats is via command level. This comes from gaining experience by sending your squires on missions. Your command level determines which missions you can undertake, how many squires you can have at once, and a few more things. You gain a plus one permanent increase to strength, intelligence, dexterity, will, and luck for every two command levels. One of the most common buffs used are bard skills. Most parties will be using Battlefield Overture or Vivace in battle, but you should be aware that each player can only have one buff active at a time. They overwrite each other, using only the effect and percentage of the last buff received. Battlefield Overture is a percent damage boost that stacks on top of other damage boosting effects. This is a great bonus to have in any party and something you should try using on your solo runs to make them a bit faster. Just try not to overbuff someone with a higher percentage. It's one of those Mabinogi etiquette things you'll learn over time. Lullaby is a great crowd control ability in most content, but also applies fixed damage bonus to the first attack on a sleeping enemy. Beware that enemies can only have Lullaby applied to them once. You only get one chance, one opportunity. Will you capture it? As an added bonus to Bard effects, there's a status called Melody Step that decreases durability loss on equipment by 25%, a total of 62.5% with Holy Water, and 72% around about if you have VIP as well. This effect applies for one hour. You can get this bonus by getting a 5 streak and freestyle jam with at least one other person joining in. And if you can get Carebrae's Bugle and use it, it will make the effect last for 3 hours and also increases your music buff effect by 3 for that period of time. It's a great effect for dedicated bards to add a little bit more percentage to your buffs. We've talked about bards, but there are other skill sets that get a bonus from supportive abilities. Raincasting is a great example of this. Not only does it boost water cannon damage when you're underneath the cloud, but it also boosts success rate of life skills. Next time you're attempting to craft an item or gather some materials, throw up a cloud to boost the rates a bit. There is a skill that adds a random passive boost with 20 different effects called Palawan Embrace. You can use it once every 12 hours IRL. The bonuses can range from stats to experience gain to potion effects. Sometimes it will be helpful and sometimes useless, but it's still a bonus that can be stacked up with these other effects. Power potions and bone chips are very commonly used items at the top level. Any of these items will give you a 20% damage boost for a duration. The calculation is 1.2 times multiplier for attack stats and also applies the bonus effects like BFO and Fate Weaver. 
There are potions with varying duration, ranging from 2 minutes to 2 hours. You can easily farm bone chips by using a PvP to repeatedly kill a bone dragon pet at the cost of phoenix feathers. Aside from this, Fiona in Magmill also sells power potions, and a 30 minute variation is a common VIP daily advanced play reward. There are many other potions to look out for that can also impact combat such as magic power potions, attack delay potions, music buff potions, and speed potions. By resting on the platform in Festia for 10 minutes, you can gain a great mood status for 30 minutes. This buff increases all stats by 10, gains you 100 HP, MP, and stamina, as well as increasing your max damage by 15, and all of your protection stats by 5. Stardust are a more permanent kind of bonus. By completing sponsorship society quests, you will gain materials to upgrade your Stardust to make them more impactful. As passive damage boosts, both Blair and Blast are great additions to your kit once you've invested in them and I've never been disappointed to see Veil trigger in combat. Like Stardust, Glyphs can be a great bonus to damage, but these are specific to each skill. Some modify range, duration, cooldown, or other effects. My most used Glyphs are a healing circle that recovers a large amount of HP, MP, and stamina over time, but my secondary are damage Glyphs that boost my damage for Magnum Shot, Hailstorm, and Water Cannon. Another bonus that can be applied in and out of combat are candle effects. Attack delay and recovery bonus speed are great for combat, but crafting success rate and gathering speed are also effects that can be made with candles using the right ingredients. For any high level crafts, I definitely recommend spending the time to get a cotton scented candle. To use these, you need to use a campfire skill at rank 5 or higher, and to rest near the campfire for 1 minute. Speaking of campfires. Something many players don't use these days is campfire archery. While standing next to a campfire with a bow, it will light the arrow on fire and increase the damage of the next attack by 50%. This isn't usable with crossbows or at ladle, and there are many locations where campfires are disabled, so it's fairly narrow in usage, but a very powerful bonus. There are other skills that can be used to increase damage with a wider range of use than campfire archery. Two of these are archery skills, support shot being the most impactful and spider shot being a skill with very limited usage. Spider shot at rank 1 applies a bonus 30% critical damage for the next ranged attack to the enemy that is bound. Support shot on the other hand is only triggered by the next melee attack. Support shot is a great damage boost, applying up to 250% extra damage, if my math is right, to a single attack. It is used in many raids like Hasidin and as part of a strategy for many missions that require high single target damage, such as Shifinaha, Subject Beta, and Feth Elite Clears. Outside of Archery, there are other skills that can apply similar bonuses. Rage Impact is an example of this, giving a 50% damage bonus to the next melee attack. The most commonly used damage boost, however, is by far Death Mark. Death Mark can apply up to 33% damage to the marked enemy from all damage types until the mark wears off. It also draws in nearby enemies to the marked enemy when it takes damage. Because this doesn't wear off after a single attack like all the previous bonuses, a whole party can take advantage of this boosted damage. This makes it much more friendly for general usage. Another way that players can increase their stats and damage is by making use of Divine Link. Divine Link shares some stats between the player and the pet, making both incredibly strong. Aside from stats, there are many other reasons why you would want to make use of Divine Link. The skill itself can be used as an iframe to dodge incoming attacks or effects if timed correctly. Many players will use this to dodge Wraith's Roar that would normally desummon pets and make the player unable to summon additional pets until the Wraiths are dead. Divine Link also redirects all aggro from the player to the pet, making it much easier for the player to navigate combat. The pet begins to act like a super tank with exceptional taunting ability. For many players struggling with enemy multi-aggro, this is a major boon and should be something you should look to use more ASAP. So far we've only talked about additive bonuses. Mabinogi has plenty of those, but there are also a plethora of stacking debuffs that we can apply to enemies as well. There are three categories of debuffs I'd like to cover here. The first are skills, the second are passive effects, and the third will be pet skills. 
Something to note is that skills that reduce defense, protection, magic defense, or magic protection will all trigger a spirit weapon's analysis ability to boost damage even further. We'll go over spirit weapons in another video, but this is good to keep in mind. On the list of skills that reduce enemy defense and protection are Dance of Death, Smokescreen, and Spinning Uppercut. These skills will all stack with the bonuses from the others, and have their own limitation. Dance of Death debuff duration is very very short, lasting only 10 seconds. Smokescreen lasts a bit longer at a 30 second duration. Spinning Uppercut doesn't always apply its debuff, but makes up for it as the debuff lasts for 60 seconds. Unique from the above skills is Hydro Transmutation, which applies a magic defense and magic protection debuff to enemies within the radius of the skill. When the skill wears off or the enemy leaves the radius of the skill, they will gain their stats back. This is a bit more difficult to use, but is an effective bonus for alchemy and magic as they don't benefit the same way as other talents do from regular defense and protection reduction. When you need to pull out the big guns, there are two methods to cut enemies. Cutting is a permanent reduction of defensive stats. The first is using brow neck. While awakened using shock or demigod, attacking with the brow neck will permanently reduce the protection of the target by three per hit. Some enemies have a limit for how many times they can be cut using this, but other enemies can have their protection cut all the way to zero. When you've reduced the enemy's protection by the maximum amount, a message will appear on your screen saying, the enemy's protection isn't cracking even with brown axe strength. Similar to brown axe, there's a magic equivalent technique card called Seal Progra. Progra, or Prog for short, reduces enemy magic defense and magic protection by 3 per attack while active. There are some requirements to activate the skill, the main one being that you must be in demigod transformation to activate it, but once active it will remain active no matter what until the duration wears off, so you can switch weapons and even disable demigod, which can happen if the player is knocked out during it. This is great to use with skills like Flame Burst, Thunder, and Hailstorm that attack many times in a short period while benefiting from the reduced stats of the enemies. You can also use dual guns to trigger many hits very quickly before switching to a talent that benefits more from the stat reductions. Many pets have the ability to passively decrease enemy stats. The two most obvious are the Bone Dragon and the Mirror Dragon. On summon, their summon ability will inflict a defense and protection reduction on any enemies caught in the effect. And yes, the effects stack, so using both is quite effective. Similar to the Bone and Mirror Dragons, Serenus have a summon effect that reduces enemy magic defense and magic protection. It has a shorter duration than the reductions applied by the dragons, but is useful for mages and alchemists. In addition to these effects, there are also pets that passively reduce the stats of nearby enemies with an aura. Among these are the Lil Jack, Scooter Imp, and Corgi pets. All three of these can stack together for a greater effect, so having diversity in what pets each player in your party uses can add up to more overall damage. Each of these three pet types will slowly decrease the enemy defensive stats with an increasing effect over time. One thing to mention here is that there are a variety of Corgi pets, all of these apply the same debuff to enemies except the Wizard Corgi. Wizard Corgi apply a Magic Defense and Magic Protection debuff instead, which makes them the preferred Divine Link pets for mages and alchemists, while everyone else will want to use the other variants of Corgi. Aside from the passive bonuses and summon effects, there are other effects that pets can have, which can increase damage or stats. For example, Cat She pets will decrease enemy defense and protection by 1 to an enemy they auto-attack for a short time. This is probably the least extreme on the list. Cart Rider pets have a bomb that they can launch at an enemy called Water Balloon that decreases their defense and protection stats in an AoE. In addition to these debuffs, there are also pets that can have skills that buff damage, like the Whale pets that have a skill called Water Wave, which will increase damage dealt to enemies hit by the wave by 10%. Foxiquin pets have possibly the most powerful buff skill, Fabulous Dance, which applies Foxiquin's mark to the enemies in a designated area for 10 seconds, giving a 5% damage bonus to enemies hit by the skill. In addition to that, the owner will also receive Foxiquin's luck, providing 35 max damage, 35 magic attack, and 15 alchemy damage for 15 seconds. Another pet that gives bonuses is the Japari Bus, which can boost the whole party using Joyful Japari Park skill. This skill gives plus 10 to all stats, 
plus 15 max damage, and plus 5 to each defensive stat, as well as a plus 40% movement speed and a 100% increase in combat experience to every player riding the pet when it's activated. Now you know all about the stacking bonuses that can be applied in Mabinogi. I feel like I just ran a marathon. Hey, uh, if you're still here, I appreciate you sticking around for the whole video. If you found anything in this video helpful, leave a like on the vid for me. I could use a little dopamine boost. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.